Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, we are going to be doing our uh, thankful wagon tonight, and I'm Ashley Fields with Yorros. I'm so glad you guys have joined me. Um, we have a couple of different options that we're gonna do. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing, hun? I hope you're well. It's staying cool indoors. This um, this heat can decide to calm down at any point now, and that would be fantastic, you know. Uh, but I have been, you know. So originally we have the plaid with the, uh, you know, darker darker shading red in here. And then I was working on one today and didn't do the shading red. I think we might try to do that. So I'm gonna see if I can wait for a few more people to hop in uh, before we get started. It's always our Yard Art Academy, we never have as many views in here. So it's always uh, a little bit slower having people kind of come in and join us and that's okay. Uh, I think I might go ahead and start taping this off though. Y'all, this was a, a boo-boo when I cut it. Oh, look here. We got that camera flipped, so it's always weird for me. Uh, when I cut this one, I accidentally cut the wheel off. So I have uh, two of these that I saved for my live. Hey, Carolyn, how are you doing, honey? Thank you so much for coming tonight. We're going to work on that plaid look. I know um, I've heard some people saying that the plaid's not as easy uh, or, you know, just difficult to achieve, but you got to have some painter's tape. Painter's tape's gonna get you really far with this whole plaid look. Now today, I was just telling Debbie, Carolyn, uh, that I got this one ready, that way when we finish this one, I have a dry one ready for us. Um, this version, I did not add the shading red into the plaid, I just did my scarecrow white background and my red plaid, and I think I'm actually gonna leave it like this. That way when we put our black word in here, it's going to look good and it's gonna pop and it's not gonna, you know, be too dark in that background and kind of fade into it. So, all right, y'all, I am going to get started. Uh, if anybody's missing us, they can catch up on replay. I'm trying to see how wide this is. I don't happen to have, I was looking to see if it has a, a width. I wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably about an inch and a half. Um, I can measure it afterwards if you guys would like to know that exactly because it fits pretty well on this pattern. So I'm going to start with one tape across the top and what I'm looking to do, I'm a little chunky for these uh, uh, real steel rods, but what I'm going to do is I'm basically taking my tape and I'm going to line it up with this top line that my CNC etched for me. So stay right along that top line. I press one end down and then I use that tension to kind of help me get to my other side. You need it nice and tight and firm and push down. That way your paint is not going to get behind it. So that first piece is down. Now I'm gonna take my next piece and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna back it up to this piece. So this is what we're gonna actually call our trash piece. Um, so I'm going to come in again, except this time I'm backing up to the base of the tape I just set down. So I get it on there nice and tight. I want to make sure I don't have any bubbles in here because then that might make my lines not, uh, not be completely horizontal and I want to make sure they're horizontal. All right. So this piece is actually a trash piece. I'm going to show you what we mean by that because we're going to pull that one up because that's where we're going to actually paint it. So come in another one, same thing, back it up to this piece I just put down, start on one end, press it down, use your tension to pull to the other end and line up those lines and then press down firmly. Now, because this tape, I like this size tape because it works out where this bottom part, I don't even have to tape it off because it's all about the same width. Now this second piece is what I called my trash piece. And that means I only put it down so I could have consistent widths between each row. I'm really gonna pull it back off because it's trash. I only used it for measuring purposes, really. So 
I'm gonna start with my um, horizontal lines. Now that I have my tape down, I made sure to really press along those edges really well. Now that we have a couple of people on, hey Victoria, hey mom. Uh, so I started with one coat of white and then I added scarecrow white down here on the base of my wagon. I added a uh, light orange, Christmas green, reindeer brown, gray, and black. So we're gonna get started with the red first. I had my dry brushes up here. Now where did I move them to? Ah, that's sad. I know I brought them. Here they are. All right, I'm gonna actually dip my brush into uh, the water a little bit. This one looks kind of frayed. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna dip it into the water because me personally, I like my strokes when my, my dry brush or my chip brush is just a little bit wet. I'm coming in with that Christmas, just the regular red, Christmas red, whatever we call it. I think we just call it red. And I'm gonna go ahead and put start with a little bit on here. And I'm just going back and forth side to side. The only reason I put the red directly on here, I typically don't do that when I'm doing dry brush, but this red, if you don't get enough, it'll look pink. So I kind of do that one directly to the board as opposed to using a cup uh, because I want to make sure it's thick enough that it's not going to look pink whenever we get done. So same thing right here. I do have a dry version that is already, um, it's already shaded. So we can move on with that one after we finish this one. Uh, but I will probably have to use the blow dryer down here just to get um, the red to dry because we're gonna have to come back in with our vertical stripes. So I'm gonna pull this off while it's wet. I mean, I don't, you don't necessarily have to. Um, I go ahead and do it. You could wait for it to be a little bit tacky and that would be fine too. But I'm really pulling it off so I can work on other parts of it while this is drying. So I'm gonna start with just my red stripes and now we're gonna work up here and then we'll come back to do our vertical stripes. So how's everybody doing tonight? I hope y'all are doing good. Um, we were supposed to make a trip down to Pearland today to take some painted yard art, but with the uh, storms kind of brewing, we're not 100% sure if they're gonna come here. And I didn't wanna go put stuff out in the yard to then have to go pull back out of the yard if we get a storm. So we didn't end up doing that, but we did have to go drop our Jeep off back into the shop for like the millionth time. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that this will be the last time. So uh, they already called and said they'll have it ready for me to pick up tomorrow. So we're gonna have to go back down. We went to Kima to drop it off today. We're gonna have to go back down uh, maybe tomorrow and go pick her back up. But we did that, we went to the grocery store today. That's about all we did. Not super eventful. All right, so all I'm doing right now is taking that shading orange. This is a number 16, this is a royal gold, uh, flat tip shader, uh, but it's a number 16. I prefer something a little bit smaller, but I was telling you guys on one of my lives last week that my number 12 kind of bit the dust and I really need to go and order me some more uh, that are like a 10 and a 12 and I just haven't done that. So I'm using the 16, I'm only loading a little bit on that corner and I always like to take that loaded corner and go right up against either a corner on my piece or right where I can start and stop with that, you know, having a fluid motion. And now these little kind of parts in between of the pumpkin poking through the slats, I am gonna just do a couple little swishes here to make it look like, you know, the middle of the pumpkin is down here coming through. So again, load my brush, start with that corner, pull it down and use what's already in your brush to kind of do your little poke throughs. You don't want it to be too, too dark. So, uh, Debbie says, only if you sell it, only if I sell what, my Jeep? We are gonna sell my Jeep. The Jeep is, uh, in fact, we went and I test drove a new car today. And I uh, told Zach, okay, I found my car, this is what I want. So now that we're gonna get the Jeep fixed, uh, Maybe we can get me a new one. Cause I think y'all have probably heard me telling y'all, oh, my Jeep's in the shop, my Jeep's in the shop, my Jeep's in the shop several times 
over the last several months because it has just been a pain in my rear. So that's my shading orange. I don't have a whole lot of space, y'all, to put, you know, a lot of swish lines in. So I'm just using what's left in my brush. Notice I've really kept this side dry. I, I, I'm really trying to keep my strokes uh, on the thinner side. So a couple little wispy strokes here. And that's really all I feel like I have the space for. I don't have much space in here to try to add too much to it. So there's a little bit of that orange. Let me clean this out. And I really probably should have done my dry brushing on my brown before doing my orange, but we're gonna make it work. And uh, we're just gonna go for it anyways. So let's go ahead and do the dry brushing on the brown. Um, I was talking a little bit at the beginning of the video that I think that we're gonna keep this plaid down here as just red and not add in the shading red. I think this is a little lighter and I think our outcome's gonna be a little bit better. Uh, so I hope that y'all will like that a little bit better here today. Let me go ahead and get some shading brown. I did go ahead and t dip the tip of this brush into some water uh, the chip brush size, this one's really a little bit too big. This is a two inch, uh, but a lot of my chip brushes, the bristles are kind of going all over the place on me and it's time to kind of get rid of them and chunk them. So this one, I'm just going to kind of turn it on its side and use it that way on these smaller areas so that I can really still get in there and get a little color on here. Now, I, the thing I really love about dry brushing is that base coat that you do underneath that, it really doesn't have to be perfect. I can, I have a lot of see-through parts. I don't know if y'all could really see that, but you can almost see through that brown here. And I didn't have to worry about the fact that, you know, I could see through it because I knew I was going to come in here with some dry brushing. And I love dry brushing because it really covers imperfections. Um, and it's easy. It's something very, very simple. I think anybody can do it. I think we could even teach kids to do it, you know. It's not a hard thing. Typically, I do have my brush turned the full wide way, but this one's a two inch and it's a little on the big side. So, kind of use it like this, all right. I always, obviously, on my vertical slats, I'm gonna stay vertical, and on my horizontal slats, I'm gonna stay horizontal. Uh, that's what's really going to make this thing pop and look alive here once we get finished with it. So add a little bit. Might even get a dash, a little tad bit more. Just a little bit. Now, I am still going to come in here with the camel. And then we're also going to come in here with shading. So the brown still has a long way to go. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Pam. Hope y'all are doing good. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. Uh, let me see. I am going to... Do, 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 do. I'm trying to see. Maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can't blow dry our stripes down here so we can finish that plaid. I need to be able to finish this plaid before I start putting my shading on my brown because then my tape is gonna take that paint right back off. So uh, for the sake of kind of, you know, our time here on the live and trying to make stuff work and flow, I have to really consider what I'm doing, my next step, my next step, because I want to make sure that I'm not interfering with something I just finished. So I'm gonna just dry this a little bit. You have to have it completely dry before you put more tape on there. Don't ever try to put tape on here whenever you still have wet spots. Y'all might see why here in a little bit if I, you know, if I can, uh, hopefully I can get this dry, but. You never know. Got a little wet spot over here in my quarter. So Pam says you, she loves the dry brush look. Thank you so much. Mary says uh, she loves the pumpkin cart. So do I. Uh, Debbie asked what kind of car. Uh, I test drove a Kia Telluride. And it's um, it's got a third row in it, 
We're not planning on more kids, but we have three dogs and I've all, I've wanted a bigger car for our, whenever we go somewhere with the animals. And um, it was so spacious. And Zach, my husband is 6'10". And so we weren't sure if he would fit in the car. So I told him, cause I knew I wanted one, but I'm like, I don't know if it's even feasible for him. Uh, so he went and got in it and he kind of leaned back and he loved the, the headrest and the cool seats. And he's like, okay, I could totally fall asleep in here. And I was like, all right, so I guess that's a go. Uh, but they only had one model there and we wanted to see the next model up. So they're supposed to call me next week uh, when they get a newer model or the higher end model in. It has like the panoramic sunroof and uh, cameras and everything from whenever you turn on your, um, your blinker, it, your camera comes out for the side. Wherever your blinker is, like if your left hand blinker's on, your camera is going to come out and show you what's on the left hand side of your vehicle. I thought that was just the coolest thing. So, so cool. Okay, so at first I started with horizontal stripes, right? I started at the very top line that's etched on my CNC to uh, get that, that line for me. Now I'm doing the same exact thing, except I am, am going vertically. So I start with my first piece down, and then my next piece is gonna be that trash piece that I'm gonna use all the way across. So this one is really just to guide me and show me that width between everything to make sure that every width, every piece is consistent. It's also really important that you pay attention uh, to whether or not you're, you, you know, it's easy to kind of get off balance. And by the time you get to the end of the board, your lines are no longer, you know, perpendicular and parallel with each other. They kind of go, and start to slant. Uh, so I really pay attention and make sure that I'm butting up to those lines and then trying to keep it level with one another. So that trash piece, that second piece I put down, I only put it down as a spacer. I'm gonna pick it up and reuse it now because I don't want to waste tape, right? The piece that I'm pulling up and taking down, my trash piece, those are because I'm gonna be painting underneath that. So it's really just for spacing purposes. Gotta focus a little bit more on this. Uh, but yeah, your trash piece is only for really spacing purposes. That's it. So we'll reuse it the whole time. Now, every time I do pull it up, I do try to come back and push my tape back down because it'll pull up the edges of that tape and it's something that it's easy to kind of overlook. And then when you put paint down on here and you go to pull up your tape, you're gonna have a lot of bleeds underneath there. Trust me, I've done it a lot. And it can be very, very frustrating. The trash piece. The plaid look is honestly, it's not a difficult thing to do. It is, it does take a little bit of time to kind of set up and, and you know, do everything for it, but it's not difficult. You just need a little tape and some brushes, but you don't even have to use chip brushes. You could also use uh, you know, mop brushes when you do it. I prefer the chip brushes because I like the brushed look when it comes to dry brushing. I want it to look like it's brushed. So, Victoria said 6'10". Wow, I know. Yeah, he's a big, big boy. And um, our Jeep has seat extenders on it, like the front driver's seat. That way he can get in comfortably. But when he's in the passenger side, he almost looks like his knees are way up here. Uh, yeah, he's he's a big boy. You should go look at my profile picture, or no, I think it's my cover photo, and you'll see uh, Zach's parents with me and my parents, and uh, you can definitely tell who belongs to which family, because me and my family, we all look like dwarfs next to the Fields family. They're all very tall. So, all right, y'all, pull up that last trash piece, right? I have my stripes ready. I'm gonna go ahead and take this chance again to push down the edges. I don't want the paint coming underneath it. I want it to look nice and crisp and clean. So push down those edges. Let me grab my chip brush. Chip brush still has a lot of paint in it, or a lot, yeah. A lot of paint from the water too. All right, oh, I need to cap this before I spill it. 
that. I'm known to do that. All right, I'm gonna now, now that we're gonna be doing our vertical stripes, I'm obviously going to do vertical motions or vertical strokes, excuse me, with my dry brush. So now I'm going up and down. Since I'm coming right up next to here and I'm backing up next to other colors, I do kind of make a little horizontal stroke right at the top just to kind of give me that guideline for where I'm trying to go and then pull it down. And that's kind of keep you from getting that paint on that brown, but also still having full squares. You want your squares to be, well, squares, you know. You don't want them kind of missing a, their edges over here. And if you do happen to get any on the brown, no worries. Just take a finger and wipe it right off. Little bit of paint. Pull it on down. So this is our regular red number 20 with a scarecrow background. You could do a white background. Um, I did the scarecrow because I feel like that's a little bit more fall. Hey Joyce, hope you're doing good, honey. Uh, I liked the scarecrow and the red together, so I went with scarecrow. Uh, but this would still look good with white. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my tape up. You can wait for it to dry a little bit. You don't necessarily have to pull it up, uh, but I like to just go ahead and get it pulled up and let everything start breathing and drying. Move that. Okay, let me give y'all a close look of what, what it looks like so you can see the strokes. I love that you can see the vertical and the horizontal strokes up close. I love that it has, you know, a little bit of white even, or a little bit of that scarecrow even poking through there. I like the way that looks. I'm actually trying to achieve that. Um, so at, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this at the bottom and rotate it back so we can finish shading up here. Since I did the plaid down here, I'm not doing any shading on there. Now, uh, obviously on this one, I added shading red with a paintbrush. I literally came in with a script liner and every part that overlaps where there's red going vertical and horizontal, I came in with the script liner and I painted it in uh, shading red. Now, that made it really difficult for you to read the words. So I decided that we'll just do just plain red with black words. But if you like the three, the three tone instead of a two tone, because right now this one's gonna be two tone. If you like a three tone, all you have to do is every single square that has overlapping paint, come in there with the script liner and do a little shading red. So for our purposes tonight, I really was kind of messing with this earlier and playing with it. And I just thought, I thought this will be a little bit better, a little bit easier. And I, I thought that this would be a better compromise, you know. Hey, Lynn, I'm so glad you're here, honey. I hope you're doing good. Carolyn says, how nice. I freehanded mine on the pumpkins. No wonder so many problems. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, the, uh, the plaid, Carolyn, I feel like I'm somebody who, if I'm trying to do stripes, uh, plaid, um, uh, chevron, anything like that, I get really, um, what's the word? Uh, I don't know how to say it other than... I get really controlling, I guess, <laughs> over the fact that I really want those lines to be uh, very, very crisp and clean. And so that's why I choose to use tape or a jig, you know, like that um, stencil that I had made for the, um, for the chevron. Uh, but that's just me. So I, you know, using the tape to me isn't, isn't hard. It takes a little bit of time. It's not hard though. And I love the crisp lines that we get from it. So I just used or added a little bit of our shading brown. I don't have a whole lot of surface area on, on here at the top or really on any of this stuff other than the base of the wagon. And so uh, I just did a little bit of perimeter shading with the corner of my brush and um, use that shading brown on there. Not a whole lot to it. Now, uh, I think 
all of my dry brushing's probably dry, so now I need to get a little bit of camel, and I'm afraid I might not have it over here. That's reindeer. Ah, Y'all forgive me, let me grab my camel right quick. We have to have camel for our dry brush. Sorry guys, um, I, like I said, I was working on a, a sample before this and I have one already done and ready to go. Uh, so I had my camel over there. So I'm gonna take that a dry brush, right? We're going back to the dry brush. We're using dry brushes a lot on this one. I dipped the tip of the, of the brush in the water. It's not even fully wet. I literally just maybe got water up to about here. And um, I don't have a plate on me. So I'm gonna use my table over here. I just put a little bit on my table. And I want to, camel, I don't want it to be as thick as the brown. I don't want it to overpower the brown because you can easily do that. I'm literally coming in very lightly. I'm not using pressure at all. I'm kind of just coming in and coming right over top where we put the shading brown on top of the reindeer. The camel can be a great complement between the reindeer and the shading brown. And that's what really makes that kind of wood grain start to pop once we get shading on here. And this is also something that I do in place of highlights on uh, my brown tones. I'm not gonna be doing highlights down here like with white like I would traditionally do, you know, because this camel is kind of gonna serve as that highlight for me. All righty. Now I'm actually done with my dry brushing for the whole night. I'm gonna show you guys up close what that looks like. You'll see that um, kind of contrast that those colors give. So uh, Victoria says, I think I'm gonna use a black and white check for that wagon. That would look so cute. It totally would. You could really do any colors on there. Lynn says she loves the plaid. Oh, I did, I posted a, a photo of this one um, yesterday, but if you don't care for the plaid, all I did was a red number 20 base with some shading red around the perimeter and a little bit of black and white highlights and low lights around the perimeter. That's it, that's all I did. So if you prefer the plain look, there's a look at it, obviously, uh, but that one, you know, it would be a lot faster than the plaid, but I love the plaid. I think the plaid looks so cute. So, uh, only thing I really got left to do, I need to get a little shading on my brown and a little shading on my green. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brown done right quick. Again, number 16 shader. I really wish I had a 10 or a 12, but I don't right now. So I'm really gonna try to keep it in this corner. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to fill that whole brush especially on this bottom layer. You'll see how thin this bottom one is. Anybody who, who's already painted it, you've noticed that. This one is maybe, I don't know, half inch wide or so. You don't have a whole lot of space. So you're gonna want to kind of keep that paint off to the side. That way you can still see that dry brush from underneath. So again, I just did that and y'all see, I, I'm really keeping it in the corner. I'm not filling up my entire brush because I'm wanting this to look, again, not like a 16, maybe more like a 10 or a 12. So loading it up, starting on the corners and pulling it down. Now, I always come through and I'm gonna do my, verti I'm, my horizontal slats first so that these um, vertical slats right here, I want my, my horizontal to blend into those. So, if I were to do my vertical ones first, you're gonna see these lines that I'm doing in my horizontal, and it's gonna kind of poke in there. It's not gonna look good. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of doing your lines to where your edges get cleaned up with the other shading lines that you do. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that does. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Joyce says it looks good. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is a pattern I really like painting. In fact, the ones behind me, I painted those to sell at the store. They're actually bigger than this one. Um, 
And so y'all know when I'm teaching you guys, I don't mind teaching y'all and doing, you know, more detailed work on it. Uh, but when it's something I'm painting to sell, I try to, I try to move a lot faster. Uh, you know, because think about it, if I'm painting for myself and I'm doing all the work myself and I move really slow because I'm doing plaid by hand on each piece, I'm really not making a lot of money on that. So that's why I kept it a lot simpler, but it's nice to be able to do this um, on here. I didn't even realize earlier I grabbed out my brown and, and did my tops, but I didn't do, I don't know why I grabbed my brown out earlier. I shouldn't have, I should have grabbed the green. It's kind of silly of me. I did my tops down here, but yeah, I don't think I did those earlier. I'm kind of scatterbrained today. Okay, uh, we need our dark green, number 12. Add a little bit on here, keep it on the corner of the tip. My brush is, has a lot of water in it because I keep rewashing it. And that, brand, that green doesn't ever seem to flow as well when it has too much water. Now, I'm always going to start on the edge and kind of then start coming inward and making my way. Um, I'm also gonna come down here and then kind of meet in the middle. Now you can add more detail to that if you wanted to. Me personally, I like to keep it a little more simple, light, easy. This one doesn't have a whole lot of space up here. So I'm just adding a few little swishy lines. We're gonna leave it like that. Now, I accidentally picked up a little bit of brown in there. So let me wipe this off. I'm trying to come over top of that. There we go. Okay. All right, y'all, my shading is done. So here's the look at this. Let me get my brush put up. And I have a dry one ready for us. So let me just move this one over here. And get our dry version. So same thing, obviously. Looks the same. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and get started with my outlining. Okay. This is going to have three different outline colors. I'm gonna outline my pumpkins with red orange number 19. I'm going to outline my brown tones with shading red, uh, what is that, 23? Yeah, shading red 23. And then the grays and the blacks and the red, uh, my wagon, I'll outline that part in black. So by the time you get these different outline colors put together, really going to be what helps bring that pop. So here's that red orange. If you don't have red orange at home, you can always just mix uh, shading orange and a little bit of red. So this is my roll gold script liner number four. And what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of loading that brush to where I have a lot in here, right? I'm going to then start down wherever I want to start. For me, I always start kind of in a corner or in a starting point or a stopping point, right? I'm going to start, and I, as I'm pulling that brush around, my pressure that I'm putting down on it gets harder the further I go. So when I first put that brush down, I'm not using pressure. If I was using pressure right when I put it down, it would like come off like a blob. So I kind of lay it down really gently, and then as I move, I put more pressure and more pressure and more pressure. And what that does is it helps you to get more fluid lines, you know, your strokes to be a little bit longer, and then it also keeps you from having big blobs of paint on there. So load that brush, start at a point. As soon as you're coming around, you can start to see or feel that that brush is coming out. You put a little more pressure and a little more pressure. Oh, you know what, guys, I meant to I meant to show y'all something earlier. I don't, I might try to uh, see if I can find something, grab something to do it on. Uh, I was painting these uh, wagons behind me yesterday, right? And as I was doing the shading on them and going all the way across, cause like I said, those are bigger. I, um, what I do when I do really long lines and I'm trying to get a good straight shade on there, I kind of come in and I dab down, like before I even put, go across with my brush. I kind of come in with that brush loaded and dab some paint across there 
and then start at one end and bring it across. And that really helps me to keep some straight fluid lines. And I thought, man, I've never shown that to y'all before. Uh, but it's really helpful to me when I'm trying to cover large areas or keep a straight line when I struggle to keep a straight line. And so I wanna show y'all what that looks like. So if somebody will remind me at the end, I'll just grab whatever, something I have around here and I'll show you guys how to do that for when you are trying to do, like I said, longer lines with shading and to keep it from getting really choppy. So uh, Debbie said she tried that today and it works so much better. Uh, are you talking about with the, um, with the script liner, Debbie? Definitely come in with a little bit of pressure at the beginning and then add more as you go. You'll realize too that that helps you to have a little bit more um, of a direction with your brush, you know? You have a little bit more control that way as opposed to it controlling you, so. Now, uh, over here where I did my swish marks, I'm gonna kinda just come in with just a little bit of the red orange. I did not add any more into my brush. I really just used what I had left inside of my brush. So, I'm gonna let this orange dry, or the red orange dry. I'm trying to think. I wanna do the brown next, and that's simply because it's in the middle, and I don't want to accidentally smear uh, smear it around, or smear the black around once I do that up here uh, by trying to reach in the middle. So that's the only reason I'm picking to do my outlining on my brown next. So I'm actually gonna grab my uh, Shading Red 23. So you don't have shading red, you could always mix it with a little bit of black and red. More red than black, obviously. Now this does have a little bit of water added to it. Uh, let me see, I really never, sometimes it's harder to tell if I have enough water added to it until I actually put it down. I think, I think I've got enough for today, I think it'll work. All right, y'all, so loading that brush, and I'm gonna start on these horizontal slats. Now, since that red orange is a little bit wet still, you might see a little bit come through in my line. I ain't worried about it. It ain't gonna really change the look of it. So, kind of start at one end and my pressure, I go down more as I'm going across. I start light with just kind of the tip of my brush on there, helping to show me where I'm going. And I get heavier and heavier as I go down. I always do come back in here to make sure that I'm filling that in because sometimes my lines are a little bit deep. And I don't fully get it paint all the way in there. There we go. Alrighty, keep on doing the same thing. Grab a little more. I didn't finish out, this was that sample I was working on. So I haven't actually finished this and seen the finished look with the just red and scarecrow white plaid. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll look good after we get done with it without that shading red down at the bottom, but I'm curious to see what it's gonna look like. You'll use a lot of the shading red because there's a lot of brown on here. So if, I, if it wasn't for the words, I would definitely be using more shading red than black, but those words do take up quite a bit, so. I haven't even been, okay, I'm just trying to, I just now started thinking about it. I haven't been checking to make sure I'm in the view of the camera, but I, we're all good. This one's got some kind of deeper lines over here, so I'm having to go back over it a little bit. Okay, I think it looks okay. Let me switch over and finish this side out.
Are you guys gonna paint y'all's plaid or are y'all gonna keep it plain? I know several of y'all have uh, ordered and picked them up. I think uh, Carolyn might be the only one I've seen that has painted hers. Come in here on my little screws. Fill them in a little bit. Okay, let's see. Pam says plain. Danae says plain. Victoria plaid. Pam hasn't done hers yet. Yeah, you know, there's, I think the plaid looks really good. Uh, but the, the plain one is just that kind of more of a timeless, cl more classic look. I definitely love, I've been really into the whole whimsical thing in the last few years. And I think I told y'all that my whole, like my Christmas is all red and uh, red and black and white and black, buffalo plaid and burlap. So that was kind of like my whole Christmas theme. Everything that I had was buffalo check, burlap, that sort of, you know, country farmhouse kind of thing going on. And so uh, it's just been something I've really enjoyed the last couple of years. So... Green, uh, Victoria says green plaid would be a, a good to contrast with the brown wood and the orange pumpkins. Thank John Deere green. That is so, so true. Uh, Zach is obsessed with John Deere tractors. In fact, his almost killed him a couple of years ago when he flipped it over. Uh, we still have to go pick that thing up because it's still in Colorado. Uh, Lynn says, I haven't painted anything in over two months, but watching you paint tonight makes me want to do this in plaid. Yes, Lynn. I know you said that you've been, uh, you were dealing with your mom's house. I think you said the pipes busted and you got flooded. I'm so sorry. I really hope that's gotten better for you guys. I hope that's kind of coming along. All right, y'all. I'm going to turn it around and, oh yeah, this is dry. Hello. <laughs> I did this one before the live. About to forget over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with my black down here because that's really wet and I'm trying to give that a little bit of time to dry before I bring my black in. So I'm going to do my words black and fill those in right quick. I need water. Got to get some water in here. You guys, whenever y'all are using a script liner, do you prefer to add water or do you like it just the thick paint the way it is? I'm curious to know, uh, cause you know, when I, when we watch, when we all get to watch Victoria paint, uh, I don't see her add water, but also I see her, she paints it totally different way. Like, you know, uh, she'll put some paint down and kind of put some paint down, put some paint down and then she'll smooth her brush across. And I'm like, how does she get that straight line? I don't know how she does it uh, with the thick paint. But I also think that it's, you know, she's an art teacher for a long time and has been doing it a long time. So I just love getting to watch her. But then, you know, I do, I, I kind of paint totally different when it comes to my brushes and my strokes and stuff. But every painter's a little different. It's kind of like your signature. We all do things in our own little ways, you know. I think I'm already liking this. I haven't even gotten two letters done. Y'all, when I'm doing my letters, like I said, I always add a little bit of water to my paint, but then I kind of butt up that corner of my brush into those lines, into that etched line from the CNC. And I just kind of follow around with that. So sometimes I go over the line, sometimes I'm inside, and I guess you could say like under the line. And it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't bother me if I go over that line. Because my brush, once I get, kind of get down in that groove, it kind of already gives me a nice flow. And it still stays smooth. Yeah, I'm definitely liking that. Without the shading red in here. I think it looks so much better without the shading red. 
I thought the three tone would look really good, but I think it was just too much. Kind of get it in that groove and follow around with it. So, so, so nice having these CNC lines, y'all. I cannot even tell you. Whenever I was still in Alvin, before we moved, we moved to Colorado, I think in 2016 to 18, I wanna say. So sometime before 16, I don't know what year it was, but when I was still in Alvin, uh, we were still doing graphite paper and, you know, patterns on butcher paper and it was such an, a nightmare which at the time we didn't really know that it was a nightmare because that was all the only way we had to do it so it was kind of like okay well it just is what it is but I still remember the first time my brother cut um, a piece that had the etched lines on it and I brought it over to that house and Alvin and I was painting it I was just beside myself at how amazing that was to have these lines and so now that we've had them for so long, it's almost like I take for granted all the work that we used to have to do uh, when it came to having a pattern on our boards. It's just so, so nice. Quite honestly, doing words with uh, these etched lines to me is easier than doing it with a stencil. Much easier. somebody outside my door. Well, hello, my baby. What are hello. you doing? Nothing. What's up? Nothing. Just Carly just came in to kind of hang out. So. Hello. <laughs> it looks like you have the inverted filter on. No, it's no filter. I just have the camera turned so that they can actually read the words. Uh, let's see. Lynn says, yes, y'all are done with your mom's house. Thank God. We uh, bought an old motor home and have been redoing it because we thought that would, that would be fun. Oh, Lord, Lynn. Yes. I, you know, when y'all come up with ideas to do stuff and then you're like, after you start doing, you're like, who had this idea? You know, was that really a good idea? So, uh, Danae says sometimes she adds too much and it separates the paint. Make sure you're mixing it really good, Danae. Uh, we have some of those mixing spoons at the store, you know, and honestly, like once I throw them on my table and they're dry, like this is dry, I'll literally pick it up and reuse it again. Uh, but mix and mix and mix and mix and that will help you. Uh, Carolyn says adding a little bit of water works best for her. Yeah, I love it when it comes to our using the shit of times, you're gonna see me add more water than you would ever need to because I use this brush day in and day out with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces. And so, uh, you know, my brush is obviously worn into probably the point where it's almost needs to go in the trash, but I'm gonna use it until it uh, frays on me and no longer works, and then I'll get another one. So, for me, I always need to add a little bit more water because that works better with my brush. But if I had a brand new brush, I would not add as much water to it. I'm gonna tell you, I'll get a squirt bottle like one of these for water. This is the best thing because it's so much easier to control how much you're using. Uh, and it's so easy, you know, it's perfect for just getting a couple of drops in there and not going overboard. I love that with the red. I love it, I love it, I love it. Give me a second, y'all, and I'll turn it around and let y'all see it the right way. But I'm gonna go ahead and outline the wagon now with black. Again, I told y'all earlier, since this is plaid, I'm not going to shade the wagon. There's no need to shade it. Uh, that would be adding a little too much. It would also take away from all the plaid. So, come in here. Kind of going down, starting light, and then getting heavier with my hand as I'm going across. It's a lot easier to keep a straighter line, and I say that as my line is going real wonky, uh, but it's easier to keep a straighter line if you start light and go heavy, as opposed to start heavy and end heavy. But I'm not always that great at straight lines, especially the longer they are 
the less straight my lines are. If any of you guys have seen my work up close, you'll see that. Or you could, I, honestly, if you look really hard in photos, you could see that too. But I, I don't bother me. It used to bother me. I used to try to be perfect with it, but there's no sense in it. People, I always, you know, anytime I'm like looking at the yarder and I'm critiquing it, and then I decide, okay, I'll just throw it out at the store and just let it be because I'm done messing with it, you know? And then it's like, it's funny because the next time I'm over there and a customer walks by, I, oh, that's just so beautiful. And I'm like, you know what? That's exactly why I need to stop making such a big deal over, you know, my lines not being perfectly straight or my circles not being perfect circles because people don't see it like that. We see it like that because we're doing it ourselves, but others, when they look at your work, they don't see it like that. Alrighty. There's a look where you can actually read. Now our thankful definitely needs some white in it, obviously. But now we're gonna, we're gonna finish out. The only other things that we have to outline is our handle and our leaves. So I'm just adding a little bit right now to that handle. That line was probably a little on the thick side. Come in here, make sure to get in here. Whenever I'm doing something and I'm turning the corner, I really let up on that brush when I turn that corner and almost take that pressure completely off. Um, and then as soon as I turn that corner, I bring that pressure back down. Come in with just a little bit. If I had a skinnier shader, I would have definitely come into the handle and added, you know, some perimeter shading on there. Um, I think that's like, this is me telling myself, I really need to go to uh, the art store, go online and get me some, some more brushes. Come in, use that excess paint that's already in here. Kind of add to your little wispy lines. Anytime I do wispy lines, I'm not adding more paint to my brush. I'm just using what's inside of there because I want it to be light. I don't want that to be dark. Alrighty. Alright y'all, all we need is some highlights and then this cutie will be done. Let me see if I can, I'm going to try to blow dry the thankful enough to where we can get white highlights on it, but because it's really wet, I'm worried that that blow dryer might fling my paint out. So let's see if we can be successful. it is fair enough um, fair enough I think we'll make it work all right now we're going to switch over to our white because we all know your piece is never done till you have a little bit of white on there uh, hey Debbie did you pop out and pop back in maybe we missed you for a little bit okay y'all I'm gonna take my white it is already watered down a little bit so I kind of my white is a little different right whenever I load my brush with black and with shading red I leave my brush loaded when I load my brush with white, I then actually offload it because I don't want very much on here. I'm kind of trying to keep this member light and wispy. You don't want too much. You just want a little bit. Now, how do I decide where I'm gonna put highlights? Really, again, there's no right or wrong for this, but if I'm doing my swishes with the shading color, my outline color, I kind of try to stay on top of those swishes, right? So I have my shading orange and then my um, 
red orange is touching that shading orange. It's on top of it, right? My white, complete opposite. I try to kind of go in those areas either beside my swish marks, on the inside, on the outside, around, something like that. Uh, but I'm trying to kind of fill in the rest of that blank area with some white. So that's kind of my purpose for when I'm choosing where my white's going to go. I want to fill in where maybe I don't have anything else. Okay. Now in here, you can come in and do a little bit of white. Mine's just super, super wet. So not a whole lot of space there. And then I did add a little bit of white onto these circles. I guess they're supposed to be like little screws or something. I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, but I did kind of come in with a little comma. Those are still wet, so that doesn't look very good right now. That's okay. Turn it around. I really should have kept the stakes off of this. I don't like to uh, paint with stakes on these. They drive me nuts. All right, I'm gonna come in here and kind of around where I've already got gotten everything. I got my shading and my black. I kind of just come in there a little bit. Now on my letters. I would like for these letters to be dry, but they're not. So I am gonna come on top of them, right? But if I had my option, I wouldn't do this while it was still wet. I would wait until it's dry. So those of you doing it at home, I'm gonna say definitely wait till it's dry because it's kind of turning a grayish kind of color for me. Put, you, put it down, wipe it off. Put it down, wipe it off. Ugh. Yeah, it would definitely look better if it was dry. That's okay, we'll make do, right? All right, gonna get a little bit on my tires. I don't think I did this one quite long enough. And, oh, well, there you go, actually, I'm done. I'll leave it like that. Let me cap this, I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, y'all, so I started with one coat of white as my base, and then I came in and added um, Scarecrow White for my base on my wagon. I did uh, Reindeer Brown, Light Orange, and Gray, and Christmas Green. And then obviously came in with my shading colors, and I made sure to, I outlined my orange with red orange. I outlined my brown with shading red, and every other color got outlined with black. So there's a look at it. Do you guys like the plaid without the shading red? Or do you like the plaid with the shading red? I think I like it better without. I think it's a little easier to read. Uh, this one I did add a little bit of gray into it, trying to see if that made it better, but it still just looks really, I don't know, kind of too much going on, a little too busy for me. So Danae, Debbie, they say, looks great, love it. I really love this one, thank you, Joy. Lynn says she loves it, Pam loves it, thank you. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we used uh, several chip brushes and did a lot of dry brushing, both with our plaid and uh, with our wood grain look on our wagon. And so there you go, that's how we got her done. The gray lettering needs black highlights. Yes, ma'am, you are correct, it sure does. I haven't finished that one. I was kind of messing with that one and never did get it finished um, but there we go so there is our red plaid thank y'all so much for coming in if anybody thinks of any questions or y'all have any more questions that I'm out of missed I'll check back in the comments and make sure that I get back to you guys uh, but thank y'all for coming tonight I hope that next time you guys do plaid it's a little bit easier do yourself a favor go grab you some painters tape this is green uh, three mil or scotch it's actually number 2060 uh, so this worked perfect for me. It's about an inch and a half wide and it worked perfect for this pattern. 
So thank y'all so much for coming tonight. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week. I know tomorrow is day one of pumpkin challenge and we have pumpkin challenge the next three days. And then Thursday, wait, what is today? Today's Monday. So Tuesday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. That's all pumpkin challenge. I think that's all we got this week. So thank y'all so much. Uh, Danae said, did you paint the pumpkins before the brown wagon part? That part doesn't necessarily matter uh, unless you maybe make a big mess with dry brushes. And in that case, if I were you, uh, if, you're, if it's harder for you to stay inside the lines, I would say do your brown base coat, do your brown dry brush, and then come in with the orange if that's something that would be easier for you. I didn't, I base coated them all at the same time. Uh, and, threw my orange on here, threw my reindeer brown on here, and I kept on going. Uh, but I can definitely understand if, if maybe your hand isn't as steady, do the brown first, do the dry brushing first, and then go in and add your orange. And then you can, it really helps you too, so you can clean up any kind of boo-boos that you might get inside of there. So thank you guys. Y'all enjoy your Monday night. We'll see you guys later on this week. Bye guys.